Hello, my dear student. Welcome back to our DRRR class week 3. Today is another God-given day for us to discover new learnings that will help us understand better the world we live in. So may I invite you for a moment of prayer as we start our learning discussion. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, come be with us today. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our minds with learning. Fill our study room with peace. Fill our lessons with fun. Fill our friendships with kindness. Fill our school with love. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas, patron saint of students, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, I am your subject teacher, and here are my contact details if you need it. Feel free to communicate respectfully. Now, let us recall the DRRR concepts that we learned from our previous learning session. We have, Mass movement is the downward movement of surface materials due to gravity. Geological hazards may be classified as sudden, which are landslides, mud flow, and lahar, or slow, which are mountain formation, liquefaction, and erosion. Next, human-made disasters occur because of irresponsible actions against nature. Hazard maps are available for the public to view and use. And lastly, there are several causes of landslides. Some of these are load on the slope, oversaturation of the soil, and oversteepening of the slope. If there are any questions or clarifications, feel free to message our GCAP during our class time. With an average of 20 typhoons entering the country every year, some consider that the Philippines is the typhoon corridor of the Pacific. Earth's changing climate brought about by the effects of global warming contributes to the worsening storms that wreak havoc in the country. With this information, let us learn more about this topic. For today's learning session, here are our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to differentiate the classifications of hydrometeorological hazards, interpret different hydrometeorological hazards, hazard maps, and use available tools for monitoring hydrometeorological hazards. The Philippines is subjected to different hydrometeorological hazards. Typhoons that enter the Philippines, Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR, typically form at the Northwestern Pacific Ocean. Also, the country has been experiencing sudden thunderstorms that bring forth heavy rains and consequent floods. Let us learn more about hydrometeorological hazards as we continue our lesson. Hydrometeorological hazards are caused by extreme meteorological and climate events such as floods, droughts, hurricanes, tornadoes, or landslides. Oftentimes, multiple hazards can occur simultaneously or trigger cascading impacts from one extreme weather event. Hydrometeorological hazards are classified based on their effect. We have long-term and short-term. Under long-term, we have El Nino, La Nina, and sea level rise. While for short-term, we have typhoons, thunderstorms, floods, storm surge, riverbank erosion, and coastal erosion. Now we talk El Nino. El Nino is a climate pattern that describes the unusual warming of surface waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. 
It is a Spanish term meaning little boy. This weather phenomenon was originally recognized of the coast of South America by fishermen in the 1600s. La Nina The La Nina climate pattern is a natural cycle marked by cooler than average ocean water in the Central Pacific Ocean. It simply means little girl and is more generally identified as a cold event. The El Nino and La Nina weather phenomenon, collectively called El Nino Southern Oscillation or ENSO cycle, describe the fluctuations in the atmosphere in the area between the international date line and 120 degrees west, referred to us as the Central Equatorial Pacific. Both El Nino and La Nina affect atmospheric pressure and temperature, rainfall, and ocean temperature. In the Philippines, the increased warmness in the atmosphere caused by El Nino will mean drought, which could affect agriculture and wildlife. On the other hand, La Nina will increase the country's exposure to floods and waterborne or flood related diseases. Next, we talk about sea level rise. Sea level rise is caused primarily by two factors related to global warming, which are the added water from the melting ice sheets and glaciers and the expansion of seawater as it warms. Studies suggested that sea level in Manila Bay is rising by 13.24 mm per year and Metro Manila is sinking by a rate of 10 cm annually. Next, we proceed to the short-term hydrometeorological hazards. First on the list is typhoons. Tropical cyclone, also called typhoon or hurricane, is an intense circular storm that originates over warm tropical oceans and is characterized by low atmospheric pressure, high winds, and heavy rain. A typhoon is a mature tropical cyclone that develops between 180 degrees and 100 degrees in the Northern Hemisphere, referred to as the Northwestern Pacific Basin. What are the differences among hurricane, typhoon, and cyclone? They are essentially the same type of weather phenomenon. It only depends on where the storm forms and happens. For hurricane, it, ha it originated from the Northeast Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean. For typhoon, originated from the Northwest Pacific Ocean and the cyclone originates from the South Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. Hurricanes are tropical storms that form over the North Atlantic Ocean and Northeast Pacific. Cyclones are formed over the South Pacific and Indian Ocean. And lastly, typhoons are formed over the North West Pacific Ocean. Pag-asa the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration is the Philippine national institution dedicated to provide flood and typhoon warnings, public weather forecasts, and advisories, meteorological, astronomical, climatological, and other specialized information and services primarily for the protection of life, and property and in support of economic, productivity, and sustainable development. Lately, due to the intensity of the typhoons that enter every year, the four grades of typhoon signals was updated to five. This was done due to the fact that the country has experienced more powerful typhoons that have gone beyond what the past public 
Storm Warning Signal PSWS Quantified. So for PSWS number 1, the lead time is 36, hour, 36 hours, winds ranging from 30 to 60 kilometers per hour, no damage to very light uh, properties, classification, tropical depression. PSWS number 2, the lead time is within 24 hours, winds ranging from 61 to 120 kilometers per hour, light to moderate damage, classification, tropical storm. PSWS number 3, lead time is within 18 hours, winds ranging from 121 to 170 kilometers per hour, Moderate to heavy damage, classification, severe tropical storm. PSWS number 4, lead time is within 12 hours, 171 to 220 kilometers per hour wind, and the impact is from heavy to very heavy damage, classification is typhoon. And lastly, PSWS number 5, Lead time is within 12 hours, more than 220 kilometers per hour. Impact will be very heavy to widespread damage. And the classification is super typhoon. Next, we talk about thunderstorms. A thunderstorm, also known as an electrical storm or a lightning storm, is a storm characterized by the presence of lightning and its acoustic effect on the Earth's atmosphere known as thunder. There are three basic requirements for thunderstorms to form. First, moisture or humidity. Second, rising unstable air. And a lifting mechanism to keep the air rising. Thunderstorms undergo several stages in their life. The towering cumulus stage or developing stage, the mature stage, and the dissipating stage. The Philippine Asm Astronomical, Geophysical, and Atmospherical Services Administration, PAGASA, warns the public of thunderstorms through three warning levels the information, watch, and advisory, each with its own symbol. All advisory is disseminated via SMS, social media, or website. Next, we talk about floods and flash floods. Floods are often caused by heavy rainfall, rapid snow melt, or a storm surge from a tropical cyclone or tsunami in a coastal areas. A flash flood, on the other hand, is a sudden rush of water over dry land, usually caused by a lot of rain. Floods and flash floods can cause widespread devastation, resulting in loss of life and damages to personal property and critical public health infrastructure. What are the causes of flood and flash floods? First, urbanization. It results from a natural increase in the population and rural to urban migration. Next, poor farming practices are shortcuts that destroy their environment to the point that result to unsustainable land. Lastly, deforestation or forest clearance is the removal of a forest or stand of trees from land that is then covered to non-forest use. The State Weather Bureau, PAGASA, currently uses a revised three-color rainfall advisory system to provide public awareness of rainfall situations. These advisories also includes estimates on the amount of rainfall and flooding possibility and the proper response expected from the community. The three colors used are yellow, orange, and red. As the color gets darker, the expected response of the community becomes more intense. 
Flood hazard maps are very important in lessening the impact of the disastrous event to vulnerable communities. Here is a sample flood hazard map of Metro Manila and our province, Nueva Vizcaya. Next, we have a storm surge. A storm surge is an abnormal rise of water generated by a storm over and above the predicted astronomical tides. A storm surge should not be confused with storm tide which is defined as the water level rise due to the combination of storm surge and the astronomical tide. The Philippine government through Project NOAA came up with the storm surge hazard maps for the coastal areas of the country exposed to this hazard. The colors red, orange, and yellow on a storm surge advisory provides the height of the water. Storm surge advisories or SSA are given when a typhoon has the potential to generate a storm surge. The SSA are divided into four categories. We have SSA1 with 2 meters height, SSA2 with 3 meters height, SSA3 with 4 meters height, and storm surge advisory for which has 5 meters high. Here is a generated surge map, storm surge map from the Project NOAA or the Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards. You can visit this site. Next, we have riverbank erosion. Riverbank erosion is the wearing away of the banks of a stream or river. It occurs when flowing water exerts attractive force that exceeds the critical shear stress for that particular stream bank material. Hydraulic failure is generally characterized by a lack of vegetation, high boundary velocities, and no mass soil wasting at the toe of the slope. Lastly, we have coastal erosion. Coastal erosion is the loss or displacement of land or the long-term removal of sediment and rocks along the coastline due to the action of waves, currents, tides, wind-driven water, waterborne ice, or other impacts of storms. An obvious example of ongoing erosion is cliff erosion. A coastal cliff eroded by wave attack will never be rebuilt by natural processes. Here are some of the effects of hydrometeorological hazards to affected communities. We have loss of life, damage to property, loss of livelihoods, health impacts, environmental damage, and social and economic destruction. As with the hydrometeorological hazards, prevention and mitigation is the key to lessening the loss of lives, properties, or the destruction of the environment. Here are some of the tools used in monitoring hydrometeorological hazards, specifically typhoons and thunderstorms. We have standard weather station with a radar, rain gauge, anemometer to measure the wind velocity, weather satellite powered by global positioning system, wind vane for the wind direction, and thermometer for the atmospheric temperature. Knowing what to prepare for, how to react to, and how to recover from these hazards can be really helpful to an individual and the entire community. Here are some of the hydrometeorological preparedness tips. We have preparing your emergency plan, setting up an out-of-town contact, be aware of your vehicle surroundings, check your supplies, first aid kit and your survival bag, secure important documents, 
figure out your evacuation route or the safest place that you can go to in case of an emergency. Follow official instructions from the government and your and your uh, local government unit and do's and don'ts for you to save your life. Next, for your task this week, participate on the fourth quarter NSET or the National Simultaneous Earthquake Drill. Create a narrative and reflection paper regarding the event. See attached rubric and template of your activity. Conduct performance tasks from the topics discussed, which is choose one hazard and develop a family emergency preparedness plan as a guide on what to do before, during, and after the occurrence of events that cause the hazard. I will explain better your activity during our synchronous discussion. So kindly attend our online meeting. Now, let us recall the DRRR concepts you gain from our discussion. You can create a graphic organizer in your notebook if you want. This session, we learned that the Philippines is located within the typhoon belt where an average of 20 typhoons occur annually. Pag-asa identified its typhoon strength classification into five levels to accommodate the new typhoons which have very high strength of winds. The Philippines is prone to a lot of hydrometeorological hazards such as typhoons, flash floods, storm surges, and thunderstorms. Lastly, technology has enabled us to optimize social media and smartphone applications that help in spreading news about what is happening in typhoon or flood devastated areas. If you have any questions or clarifications about our lesson, feel free to message me. Okay? Now, let us get to know an influential Filipino in the field of DRRR. He is Nathaniel Agustin Cruz or more popularly known as Mang Tani. He is a Filipino meteorologi meteorologist who formerly served as meteorologi meteorologist for Pag-asa from 1982 to 2010 and has been serving as a radio and television weather presenter for GMA News since 2012. He has captured the attention of TV viewers with his effective method of weather reporting, allowing the general public to clearly understand scientific and technical information and disaster preparedness tips on typhoons. Further, he is engaged in various activities in relation to climate change, climatology, vulnerability assessment, and applied meteorology, which have helped enrich the field and further improve practitioners knowledge and skills. I am ready. Hello, my dear student. As we continue to learn in this new normal, let us be guided with this motivational quote from Mehmet Murat Ildan. You cannot forever escape from the storm. You must learn to stand up to it. Truly, in, this, in relation to our lesson, how will you face the challenges of life successfully? You can put your insight in the attendance check of your SMU LMS account. Let us now have our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, thank you that you have revealed your love to us today. We invite you to send us out from here in the power of the Holy Spirit, wanting to flame the gifts that you have given us. Come reveal your grace and truth to us each day. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Also, please be guided with our learning schedule. Next week, which is week uh, 4, it will be your performance task activity that involves family preparedness plan on earthquake or geologic hazards or hydrometeorological hydro hazards. And if there is a scheduled 
quarter national simultaneous earthquake drill which is the fourth uh, you attend it and you make the reflection narrat and narrative report with documentation okay and uh, lastly for the mode of submission of your outputs you can communicate with me through our fb messenger or our class gcap submit your academic requirements in the smu lms on time feel free to to communicate with me and may mary our mother and patroness inspire you always god bless and keep safe always see you in our synchronous meeting goodbye